to be here with you today. Let's learn about God together. Before we get started, let's say our kid's confession and our kid's creed. Our confession is a prayer that we say telling God that we are sorry for our sins. Let's say our confession together. Heavenly Father, we have thought, we have said, we have done things that are not right. Help us to be truly sorry and forgive us for Jesus' sake. Amen. Our creed is a prayer that we say telling God that we believe in him and everything he says in the Bible. Let's say our creed together. I believe in God above. I believe in Jesus' love. I believe in the Spirit, too, who comes to teach us what to do. I believe that I can be kind and loving, Lord, like Thee. Amen. Hey, hey, friends! It is so good to be here with you again this week. To introduce our story today, I have something super fun and silly for you to watch. Check it out. I challenge Bishop Matt Kessler and his children to a veggie straw thong. 30 veggie straws. First person done wins. Grand prize, cold glass of chocolate milk. Chocolate milk? On your mark, get set, veggie straw! Woo woo! You know, this win, it may have looked easy, but I, I, it was a lot of preparation to get to this point in my career. And uh, there's two people I'd like to thank. One is my idol, even though I shouldn't have idols, but Joey Chestnut, shout out to him. I uh, see you saw me using his strategy. You gotta get it in your mouth and then get some water in there, slide it down real quick. And the other one is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he's the greatest. And now for the trophy presentation. That's right. Wow, wasn't that fun? I had no idea who was gonna win, but in the end, Ben won it all. Good job, Ben. In today's story, we are going to hear an amazing story about food. But unlike the Kesslers and Miss Gabby, the people in our story did not have a lot of food to eat. 
So we will get to see how God is provider. Who knows what that word provider means? Yeah, a provider is someone who gives you what you need. Do you have any providers in your life? Yeah, your mom or your dad, whoever takes care of you, they provide you with care and you need care. What about doctors? They provide you with medicine and help whenever you're sick. And farmers, they provide us with food so that way we can eat and stay healthy. We have a lot of providers in our lives. But you know what? God is the ultimate provider. And he makes sure to provide us with everything that we need. That's why that is our ponder point for today. God is provider. Let's ponder this fact. Can you say it with me? God is provider. Awesome. Before we get started, let's stop and say a prayer to ask God to be with us and teach us more about him. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you so much for another day to come together and learn more about you. God, thank you for providing us all that we need. And Lord, I pray that this week we would see all of the ways that you provide for us every day. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's hear our story. This story comes from four different books of the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you know what? It happens right after the story we heard last week. Who remembers our story from last week? It was a fun one. Jesus and his disciples had just left a huge crowd of people. Jesus had been teaching people and healing the hurting and the sick people. And then they went to get in a boat to go to the other side of the lake. But what happened when they were on the lake? Yes, a huge storm came. The rain was pouring down. The waves were crashing over the sides of the boat and the disciples were so scared. But what did Jesus do? He stopped the storm. What did he say? Let's say it all together. Peace, be still. Exactly. Well, after the storm stopped, Jesus and his disciples finally made it to the other side of the lake. And as they were getting out of the boat, they saw another huge crowd of people gathering to meet Jesus. There were over 5,000 people, actually. That is a lot of people. Can you imagine a crowd of 5,000 people? It might look something like this. Wow, that is a lot of people. It was probably very crowded and very loud. But you know what? Jesus welcomed the people. He knew that they had traveled a long way to come and see him and learn more about God. Jesus cared so much about the people that he taught them for many hours. He even showed them God's love by healing the hurting and the sick people. So after many hours of talking with the people all day, the sun began to go down and the moon came out. Now, Jesus and the people were in the middle of nowhere. There was no shelter, no bathrooms, and no food. And everyone was getting very hungry. Imagine the sound of 5,000 people's stomachs grumbling because they were so hungry. So the disciples came to Jesus and they said, this is a desolate place. The day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages to buy food for themselves. But Jesus didn't want to send anyone away. He wanted to show people that God is provider. So Jesus said to the disciples, they do not need to go away. Give them something to eat. 
But remember, they didn't have any food. There were no stores, no restaurants where they could go and buy food. The disciples didn't know what to do. But then a little boy who had brought a lunch with him decided to give it to the disciples to share with all of the people. The little boy had brought two fish and five loaves of bread. But this was just enough for one little boy. Do you think that this could feed 5,000 people? I don't know. Let's keep reading to find out. So Jesus told the people to rest on the grass and he told the disciples to bring him the little boy's lunch. He took the food, he looked up to heaven and he thanked God for it. And then he began to tear the bread into pieces. When he had done that, they put it in a basket and started to pass it around to all of the people. But remember, it was over 5,000 people. And this doesn't look like a lot of food, right? But you wanna know what happened? Instead of the baskets getting empty, they just kept getting more and more full. They were not running out of food. The Bible says that they all ate and were satisfied. That means that they ate until they were full. Have you ever eaten so much food that you could not take one more bite? That is how all of the people felt. And the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover food. That's amazing. How did that happen? It was a miracle. Jesus had taken a small amount of food and miraculously provided for over 5,000 people. Jesus was using God's power to provide food for the people and showing them that God is provider. And you know what? Just like Jesus provided food for all of the people, God provides for you too. What are some things in your life that God has provided to you? Yeah, God provides us with a lot. He's provided me with a home, with family, friends. He's even given me love and kindness and joy. These are all good things that God provides because he loves us. This is an amazing story, and it's such a good reminder to trust in God and know that he will provide for us everything we need. So, are you ready for this week's memory verse of the week? Listen closely. It says, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Psalm 34, 10. Do you want to practice saying it all together? Let's take it slow. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Psalm 34, 10. Good job. This verse is telling us that animals like lions will get hungry and go search and hunt for their food. But you and me, we can trust that God will provide everything we need for us. He provides for us because he loves us so much. So I want you to think again about the things that God has provided you. Do you think that any of these things that God has provided you you can share with other people? I think so. So that is my challenge for you this week. I want you to think of a way that you can share a good thing that God has provided to you. Maybe you can draw a card for someone and send it to them in the mail. 
Maybe you can make a silly video and send it to your friend to bring them joy. Maybe you can call someone on the phone who lives by themselves and say hi and say that you're thinking of them. That would provide a lot of kindness to that person. Maybe you can help mom and dad at home with a chore or two. There are a lot of ways that you can provide good things for your friends and family. So get creative. I cannot wait to see the way that you share the good things that God has provided to you with others. I will be praying for you this week and I cannot wait to see you again next week. Bye.